So, LG, uh, the other treatment that we're working on to develop is called transcranial magnetic stimulation. And that's this device here. And essentially, what it allows me to do is stimulate your brain or anyone's brain using a non-invasive technique and using a magnetic field. When I put the coil on the brain, the pulse will transcend through the coil into my, through my scalp into my brain. And then the nature of the brain tissue is such that it will reverse the direction of the current, and that's what creates the magnetic field, actually. And so when I put this on, what I'm doing is I'm altering the action potential of a neuron that's underneath the coil. Okay, and so in theory, what we're doing is I, I developed um, or I adapted a protocol for this patient population of persons in the vegetative state so that we could uh, safely, or what I think is safely, provide stimulation to their brain so that we can activate those neurons that have, been, that have survived or maybe that were previously dormant and now we can activate now. And if I give them enough sessions, my theory is, is that we would then eventually over time be able to have one neuron located close to where I'm stimulating, eventually talk to a neuron that's fairly far away or remote from the site of stimulation. So when I stimulate the brain and put the coil on a patient's brain, I'm putting it in a certain, I'm orienting the coil in a certain way because I'm trying to target certain fiber tracks in the brain. And the fiber tracks are actually sort of, they sort of run at this angle, okay? And so I don't want to hold the coil like this. I want to hold it at the angle of the fiber track. So that way I have better odds of having this neuron that I hopefully I've activate communicate with another neuron along this fiber track. And we're targeting that fiber track in part because there are a lot of rich connections with the brain stem, which was, has a very heavy influence on arousal, wakefulness. And so we're trying to target this area so it descends down ultimately eventually to the brain stem. And then we'd like to see if it kicks back up. And what I'm showing you now is one way that we help to inform how we're developing the TMS treatment. You'll need to see, first see a healthy brain um, so that you can understand what this image is. What this is, is, is it's actually the white fiber tracks of a healthy brain. And all the colors imply direction. Green implies from front of brain to back of brain. Whereas the red, orange, and yellows imply the, the, the tracks that are going to cross between the hemispheres. The blue imply tracks that ascend from bottom up, so, or they may fan out. So here we have a young man with a severely injured brain, and on the left here, what we see, this black hole reflects his shunt. And all that is is an MRI, the signal drops out, and so it's not lack of brain tissue, it's just that his shunt is there, and the shunt helps drain his fluid in his brain. Whereas on the right side of his brain, what you see here, the black here, is lack of residual tissue. So he has had so much neuronal loss that there isn't any tissue in here. And so what happened here then, after we provided him with 12 treatments, these fibers that connect, right, from front to back, up and down, and across hemispheres, we see growth in these fibers. And so essentially we're starting to see changes even on this incredibly damaged right side. We see more fiber tracks here in the front area of the brain, as well as the cortical spinal tract is starting to fill in. And we actually have some fibers starting to grow in his temporal region as well. And then on the left, we also see some growth up there in the frontal regions. So um, this evidence indicates to us that TMS is clearly having an impact and we're getting the neurons to connect somehow. And we have a lot to learn about it, but it certainly um, holds promise. We are certainly seeing changes at the level of the white fibers in this gentleman, as well as our other two subjects. And behaviorally, we also saw gains that correspond with these changes in structural integrity of our white fibers. All right, Dr. Pei, and thank you so much for sharing your, the work that you're doing. And that concludes our segment. You've learned a lot of information. That's a wrap for NeuroWrap. See you next time.